On the Greek island of Crete, an airplane waits. Oh, whoa, whoa. Be careful walking around the airplane. Never look away from it. It's a delicate, pampered machine, attended by a team of more than 40 designers, builders, pilots, and helpers. Listen for that rubbing in flight. If you hear any rubbing, we need to know. They have spent three years and nearly a million dollars preparing for a single 72-mile flight across the Aegean Sea. A modest goal, perhaps, except for one The engine is a human being. A few miles away lie the ancient ruins of Knossos, where a mythical inventor named Daedalus was said to have been imprisoned 3,000 years ago along with his son, Icarus. Daedalus built wings of feathers and wax so that he and his son could fly to freedom across the sea. But Icarus was overwhelmed by the power and flew too close to the sun, which melted his wings. While Daedalus, who flew with more restraint, made it safely across. Now the heirs of Daedalus hope to recreate his mythical flight well aware that they might just as easily recreate the flight of Icarus. To have any hope of reaching their goal, they've had to create the most efficient human-powered airplane ever built. With a wingspan greater than a 727 jet, Daedalus weighs just 68 pounds and represents more than 75,000 man-hours of design, construction, and testing. But the weather could destroy it all. The success of the flight will depend on being able to predict with certainty conditions that are very rare in the Mediterranean. Almost no wind for a period of at least six hours over a 72-mile expanse of open water. In preparation for the flight, five world-class cyclists have spent six months in training as pilots. Only one will have a chance to fly. Four world-class competitive cyclists have been recruited to fill out the pilot team. That one's a Porsche and this one's Greg Zach, Frank Scotia, Eric Schmidt, and Canelos Kenalopoulos all have greater power and endurance than Glenn Tremel, but none of them have his flying experience. So while the Daedalus planes are under construction in Massachusetts, the Daedalus pilots are in California learning to fly. December and January are the wettest, windiest months in 30 years at Edwards Air Force Base. The builders are extremely protective of their million-dollar airplane. Yeah. It's, start, it's starting to gust. All right. All, right. All right, let's put it in. Then, just two weeks before the scheduled departure for Crete, everyone's worst fear is realized. Keep them, put the nose down, speed it up slightly, not too fast though, not oh, too no, fast. No. Keep the wings level, keep the wings level. Left rudder, full left rudder, full left rudder, full left rudder. The flare, oh. 24 hours later, the engineers gather at Hanscom Field to watch the tape and figure out what went wrong. Slightly, not too fast though, not too fast. Keep the wings level, keep the wings level. Left rudder, full left rudder, full left rudder, full left rudder. The flare up. From now on, there's very little sleep for the building crew. The move to Greece has been set back a month. And if there are any more delays, they won't make the spring weather window this year, or perhaps ever. By the end of February, the new plane called Daedalus 88 is in California ready for testing, while Daedalus 87 is back in Boston being repaired. As it turns out, the suspense is short-lived. That's good. With more than twice the dihedral of Daedalus 87, Daedalus 88 seems to be perfect. It's finally clear that the plane has reached its ideal form and is ready to take on the myth it was named for. On the evening of March 26th, 
a C-130 transport plane provided by the Greek Air Force, is on its final approach into the Heraklion Airport on Crete. Inside are the two Daedalus planes and the Light Eagle, outboard motors, spare parts, computers, and all the other necessities of human-powered flight. From this point on, the Daedalus project is a bilingual, bicultural effort. We, we get later. I think for one. The Greeks embrace the project with a passion. Every Greek child knows the story of Daedalus and Icarus. Here, it's the impetuous son Icarus, not Daedalus, who is honored as the mythical pioneer of flight. So, on the nearby island of Icaria, the Hellenic Air Force Icarians welcome the Daedalus team to Greece. The project is now very much in the public eye. The Greeks are providing extensive support, and anything short of total success will be hard to explain. But back on Crete, the difficulty of what they're trying to do begins to sink in. A hangar is set up to house the planes beside the runway where Daedalus will take off. The next day, gale force winds nearly blow it away, along with the unassembled plane inside. In fact, the wind seems to blow constantly on Crete. Looking out to sea, it's difficult to imagine a day calm enough to fly a human-powered airplane. A team of meteorologists has been studying the weather along the flight route for three years, and the statistics say that there should be two or three calm days in April before it gets too hot to fly. Somehow, those numbers seem more theoretical here than they did back in Massachusetts. Finally, in the third week of April, the forecast starts to improve. On Friday, April 22nd, Steve tells the team to be flight ready Saturday morning. Canellos is up in the rotation. Looks good, Yanis. Feels right to me. Early Saturday morning, the weather appears to be perfect cool temperature and very light winds from the south. Fine, well, we're gonna go. It's time for Canellos to take the stage, and he does it with an inside joke for the engineers. Oh, lightning holes. <laughs> <laughs> the surprise of the day. <laughs> the holes in his shorts are his gesture toward the obsessive drive to reduce weight in the airplane. Take off sight to we got the south wind at Santorini, we okay. got a south wind here, we got a south wind at Dia. I think we're in uh, good shape. If it holds, okay. the light tailwind from the south will increase the plane's speed, shortening the flight time. But Canelo still must carry a heavy six-hour supply of the energy replacement drink, just in case. Okay, I'm looking at the smoke now. Uh, we got a fairly good downdraft coming over that lip, and uh, I'd like to see him uh, three or four meters above the runway surface when he goes over that. Yeah, okay, okay. Are you uh, ready for takeoff at this time? Over. Okay, Steve. Okay, Canelos. Ella, the taxi. Take off. He's up. Well, the research part of this project is officially over. Beautiful, no problems at all over the lip. Awesome. Really good, Canales. Looks great. Awesome. 
Here we go. Woohoo! Uh, what's your heart rate, over? The Greek Navy, Coast Guard, and Air Force are on hand for emergency support and to keep the pathway clear. But Daedalus doesn't seem to need any help. The plane and pilot perform beautifully, and with a boost from the tailwind, the only concern is that it will all be over too soon. The only landmarks now are the world records falling one by one. First down is the Gossamer Albatross straight line record of 22 miles. Then it's the Light Eagle's absolute distance mark at 37 miles. Finally, the Gossamer Albatross duration record at 2 hours and 49 minutes. But the records have become almost a footnote to the experience. The greater satisfaction now comes from the realization of a dream, a modern mythical creature, half man, half machine, living out the earliest fantasy of flight. Almost four hours into the journey, Daedalus approaches its final goal, the island of Santorini. Okay, Santorini Beach, this is command boat. We're gonna want you to get ready to lay the smoke for us. Uh, it's just over those boats. The flight has been flawless, almost routine. Canelos could probably keep going for hours, but the gods are not going to let the mortals off so easily. The wind is suddenly picked up. Steve, the smoke is coming out. Canelos will have to come in parallel to the beach for an upwind landing. Okay, let's get the beach clear, beach people. And uh, Canelos, I want 20 degrees to the right. Give me a good right turn. We gotta have, I want to give you plenty of room to approach that landing site. Over. Okay, don't worry. I never worry. Okay, they look good now. Okay, we've got a big headwind here. We're barely making any way at all. Um, Canelos, uh, that looks good. Maintain this heading. There are people running on the beach now. I think there's a lot of people running. Okay, well, don't worry about them. We're going to land where they aren't. Caught in the strong headwind, Canelos is having trouble approaching the beach. Okay, maintain that heading. Maintain that heading. I want the wing runners right there. He's going to set down almost vertically. Okay, you're looking good, Canellas. A little bit of a right hand correction. A little bit of a right hand correction. Easy, keep the. Uh oh. Uh oh. A gust of wind snapped the tail boom and then the wing, turning Daedalus into Icarus. The first thought is for the safety of Canellas. But before the crowd can reach him, he's out of the plane and on the beach, looking refreshed after his swim. The records have been set and no one is disappointed. And while the effort may seem to be short on practical benefits, a pursuit like this can inspire progress in technology by changing ideas about where the limits lie. If a plane can fly with a quarter horsepower engine, what else is possible?